What's going on, happy people? It is Saturday morning and I had no intention of filming today, but Brad Gibson just called and said, let's go crappie fishing out on Lake Okeechobee and there was no way I could say no. And because I just came from up north where we caught a bunch of crappie, but we didn't catch a bunch of big crappie, I figured if I don't film this, no one's gonna believe me. So we are after giant black crappie on Lake Okeechobee with Brad Gibson and my little brother Gabe. Hang on. if we were just in a race or Brad felt like he had to drive 90 miles an hour getting out here. Now that we're here, it feels like it's about 85 degrees, so I shed some clothes and I'm ready to fish. First up here, we got Brad Gibson, Gabe Arrington. Y'all notice him back, but the heck out of me too, don't you? See that blue heron up there? I'm gonna catch a fish right under him in about two minutes. They sit there and watch him. Can I explain something to y'all? That's the closest I've ever trolled up to one. I was thinking The that. whole time I didn't want to say anything because I've never, I've never been that close to one in a boat like that. How deep are you letting your jig fall? Um, about a foot to a foot and a half. It's only about two and a half foot of water in here right now. Uh, two and a half to three foot in places. And you want to fish Fish are sitting low down in there. And of course the crappie, you want to fish above them. They rarely go down to feed. They like to feed up above, up above their eyes. There's one right there. Nice one. It's a good keeper, 11, 11 and a quarter inch fish. Yeah, look how, look how fat. With the belly on her. Good night. What's your favorite way to eat these fish? Fried. Fried? I love them fried. Oh yeah. Full or fillets? Fillets. Fillets. Absolutely. Gabe, I told you that fish would be running that bird. I mean, what was it, two foot from where he was sitting at? Right on top of him, pretty much. We've heard very little out of you today, Gabe. Yeah, because I know if I don't concentrate, he's going to school me. I spent many years on the bow of this boat with him so frustrated that he would outfish me. There he is. That's a That's good a one right there. Gabe. Get it out. Wrap, wrap him in the stuff. That's a good one. Oh boy. I wasn't filming. Are you kidding me? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, y'all. That's a lumper. Hooked right up in the button, right up the top of the mouth. What we're using today is a 16th ounce pink head with a sickle hook in it, number four sickle hook, and a panfish assassin uh, in the spring minnow color. So that represents a minnow? Well, the, the body and the way it works is a minnow, but it's, we have a lot of grass shrimp in this lake, mm -hmm. you know, and we all know that grass shrimp have a green tint to them, and, and I, I, they feed on grass shrimp as much as they do minnows in here. I mean, the old timers have been using grass shrimp around here for 100 years to catch the crappie. A lot of colors work. You know, everybody has their own favorite, but I tell everybody, just use what you're confident in, you know? And this is, this is my confidence bait. What he just said makes more sense to me than anything in the world. I don't care if it's your gun, your bow, your ammo, your fishing pole, your jig, or the underwear you put on in the morning. Use what you're confident with. The more things you are confident in that you're using that just creates confidence in your day, whether you're hunting or fishing or just at your at your day-to-day -day job, confidence is key. There he is. Another one in there. Nice. Another giant. Are you kidding me? Under the cattail mat. Look at that. And that is awesome. And the best part about this is 
it's not negative 25. We didn't need a, a saw to get through the ice. <laughs> I always love fishing around on blue herons. They usually tell you where they're at. What's the trick here, Brad? It's holding your mouth right is the first trick. Second trick is not moving it too much. That's the biggest problem I see with people out here. And they're constantly wanting to do this right here with it. Well, I mean, I don't even know how the fish can see it when people are doing that. Dude, that is a giant gantor. Right Brad and I were in a crappie tournament. Everybody makes fun of us because we're using 30 pound braid. So we're in a tournament and I said, you know what, I got Brad's number. I went and bought four pound fluorocarbon. Fishing side by side with him using braid in clear water. He probably had 15 and I'm like, you know what, I'm going back to the braid. Really? The four pound fluorocarbon, you couldn't get no lighter. Using the same jig, the same rod, the same water. He was schooling me so bad, I went back to Bray. <laughs> you know, I've been out here crappie fishing for years, but every single year it changes. Year to year it changes because the depth of the water changes. If the water goes up and down, the fish are going to move accordingly. That's why. If you don't do it a lot, it is so much more cost effective just to call a guide and go with him. Then you ain't jacking around. It's nearly impossible. Oh yeah, that's a good one. Oh yeah. To the live well. So Brad, you're gonna have to tell me about these camo rods you have. I'm literally trying to film the tip of your rod <laughs> and cannot see it. They, uh, it was tricky for me at first, but I don't know. I just, I've been fishing these rods a couple months now, and um, I tell you, I really love them. There he is, yep. Oh, yeah. As y'all can see, <laughs> some people are professionals. I am not a professional. This is how we check them if we think they're any bit close. As you can see, his head's all the way down. Here's the 10 inch line, and he's a good half inch above it. So he's going in the box. <laughs> you think we can run him down? He's going to my honey hole right now, Robert. We gotta go. <laughs> but what is it with bass fishermen driving 90 miles an hour everywhere? Was that a cat boat? <laughs> yeah. There you go. She's been spawning. You can look at her fins and tell that. Okay, so tell me how you know. See how she's red right there from fanning? Tip of her tail's red. How are you planning on cooking these? I don't know, you're cooking them. Oh God, look at the bacon! <laughs> Holy mackerel. Uh, oh my gosh. Giant. See, that was my fish because I was in that hole. Oh no. <laughs> giant. You gonna pull the boat out of the way? Yeah. Yeah, they need two of them. Oh, there he is. Yeah! Look at that. Yes! Success! Down to the wire. I literally, I was like, come on, man. I need one fish. I didn't catch a bunch, but I did catch one. Now let's go to the house, clean them up, and cook them. All right, you guys, so we are back at camp right now. I actually took Jake, Gabe's son, out hog hunting this afternoon. The only thing is, all we saw were deer. We saw a doe, a little button buck. But what was really cool about the hunt today, when we got back to camp, Jake looked at me, he goes, even though we didn't get anything, 
this was an amazing hunt. And that, that truly makes your heart happy whenever, when, when youngsters enjoy being out there, seeing game and having a good time. And seeing Gabe caught way more fish than me today, Gabe's gonna be cleaning them today and he's gonna tell you a little bit about these crappies. But you see how this one's darker? This one's lighter? Male, female. The males come in and get the beds ready on the reeds, the reeds that we were fishing in. Mm -hmm. They'll come in and get everything ready. The females will push in, spawn, and go back out. The males will stay. Typically when a male eats, he hits twice as hard as a female. And we think that's because he's guarding either the fry or the eggs. All right, you guys, so I don't know who mentioned this on my Facebook page, but these were for sale on TV talking about how they work on a grill. So someone said, Rob, you gotta try that out. Well, that's what I'm doing. Um, I reckon I'll just, I was gonna put some butter on there, but they swear you don't need butter. To season the fish, all I'm, I'm gonna go ultra simple, ultra good. Take your fish, sprinkle little Everglades on them. That's about all she wrote right there. Hey, as seen on TV, you're about to get fact checked. What do you think is going to happen, Gabe? I don't even know what that is that you just put on there, so. Well, that's fish, and that's some copper no, mat. how about this thing? I think it's some kind of copper mat. You think it's ready? Well, oh, heck, I have no, I have no idea. Just try it. I guarantee it's going to be good. I personally would add a little bit of butter. Just a smidgen. You know what they say, y'all? Butter makes everything better. And if my light wouldn't have gone dead, the quality of this video would be better. It looks like it's trying to make some grill marks there. Me and Gabe are going to be at the Harrisburg show this coming Saturday and Sunday. So if you're near, the Great American Outdoor Show. We just booked tickets about 15 minutes ago. We will be there. And if you check my Facebook or Instagram, Deer Meat for Dinner, and Blue Gabe uh, on Instagram, he's Blue Gabe, we will both be giving updates as to where we are. But we will be at the show start to finish next Saturday and Sunday. So the last Saturday and Sunday of the Great American Outdoor Show in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, we will be there having a good time and we hope to see you there. I do like that nothing sticks to it. Most most of the time, if you're trying to grill a little flay fish, <laughs> how do I even say that? If you're trying to grill a little piece of fish on the grill, it would be falling through right now, and this is not letting it. See the little chunks? That would all end up as casualties. But here, it's just staying. I think it's done, dude. Dude, I just had the best idea ever. If you have an idea of something you've seen as seen on TV and you want us to try it, if it fits into our like outdoor catch, clean and cook lifestyle, we will do that. Um, this thus far, no matter what the fish tastes like, I'm going with a win. 
I mean, it was relatively inexpensive and uh, did what it said it was gonna do, so. Now let's try it. Let's try it. Sarah always said, this is so good. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Have you ever had grilled crappie filet before? Mm -mm. I will say that Brene sauce that you taught me about. If you pour it, oh gosh, that would be so good. All right, you're oh, dude, Sarah, it would be so good. It would be so good. <laughs> right there, y'all. Drop a big thumbs up if you wish that, that was for you. Wow, dude, that tastes like snapper. This is good. People that say they don't like freshwater fish, they obviously don't know how to cook or they ain't got very many brains. I do like the butter on there. The butter was good. So dude, check it out. We're like done. I've been out deer hunting this afternoon. I'm totally shadowed. We've been having a great time. I really appreciate you. Gabe, do you appreciate them? And if y'all want to know where we're at, at the Harrisburg show, don't even bother trying to get a hold of him. You might as well message me. I he doesn't answer his phone. <laughs> so, I do, I have really dedicated myself to paying attention to being a husband, a dad, and a YouTuber. Unfortunately, I get a gazillion messages, so it's really hard to keep in touch with all of them. So I just shut my phone off and do what my priorities are. Now granted, I love making my YouTube videos, I love being a part of y'all's lives, I love that you are a part of my life, but I have a bad problem responding to messages sometimes. That being said, I hope you enjoyed this video because I love you and I appreciate you and I'm gone.